Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about velocity versus time graphs. So when we think about a velocity versus time graph, we have velocity on our y-axis and time on our x-axis. And so we actually got to a lot of ideas in class today. So what I'd like to do first is just kind of get this running list of the big ideas related to v versus t graphs. So one of the first things that everybody came up with today is that the y-intercept of a v versus t graph is equal to the initial velocity of the object. And just to keep in mind that this is not always zero. For the example that I've given you today, it happens to be. But in class today, we saw uh, initial velocities of positive 4 meters per second, for example. The next big idea that we talked about was the slope of a velocity versus time graph. Now we know that the slope of any graph is change in the y-axis divided by change in the x. And in this case, our y-axis happens to be velocity and our x-axis happens to be time. And in physics, this quantity, this delta v over delta t, is a very important quantity. It happens to be acceleration. So what's very exciting about a velocity versus time graph is that the slope of the v versus t graph is the acceleration of the object. Something that we've discussed already, and it may not be directly um, aligned with velocity versus time graph, but it's something that I think would be important to discuss here. We talked about the idea that when you have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration, you have speeding up motion. Same thing with a negative velocity and a negative acceleration. So these are our examples of speeding up motion. And when we have a velocity versus time graph, we can actually see the same pattern. So if I take a look at the example graph given here, from clock reading of 4 seconds to 6 seconds, all of the velocity values are positive. Notice that the slope of this graph is also positive. So this means that acceleration is positive here as well. When V's are positive and A's are positive, you have a speeding up motion. Now let's take a look at what's going on at the clock reading of 8 seconds to 9 seconds. All of the velocity values here are positive, but the slope is negative. The acceleration is negative. When the velocities are positive, but the accelerations are the opposite sign, you have a slowing down motion. So some things that I like to mention here are just these ideas that positive v, negative a, negative v, positive a, when the signs are different, you have slowing down. And now that we know that the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration, we can ask ourselves, is the slope positive or negative? And it can help us reason to what's going on in terms of the velocity. Okay, one more thing about velocity versus time graphs that you figured out. Velocity versus time graphs are interesting because the displacement of the object can be found from a velocity versus time graph. So the displacement of an object is the area under the V versus T graph. And we practiced a lot with that this week. So the area under the V versus T graph. And I'll give you some examples to work out with this graph that we see over here. Okay, so I think that we've hit all of the big ideas on velocity versus time graphs. Make sure that you have these in your notes, and let's see how you do with a couple of questions related to all of these ideas. The first question I want to look at is, are we able to take this graphical representation of motion in the form of a velocity versus time graph and translate that into a verbal description? So what would you do if you were asked to describe the motion of the object? Well, the first thing that I do is I like to choose these segments, okay? And I like to align them in terms of clock reading. So I notice that from zero seconds to the two second clock reading, I have one type of motion. I notice from the two second clock reading to the four second clock reading, I have another kind of motion. from four seconds to six seconds, I've got different motion. Six to eight, eight to nine, and nine to 10. 
Let's see how we do here. From 0 to 2 seconds, what's going on? I have an initial velocity of 0, then negative 2, then negative 4. These negatives here only tell us about the direction of the object. If you notice, the magnitude of the velocity to, well, first 0, then 2, then 4, tells us that from 0 to 2 seconds, the object is speeding up. We could go even further here and calculate how it speeds up. So we could calculate the acceleration if we wanted to. It would be delta V over delta T. So we need two points on this line to analyze. I'm going to choose what's happening at the two second clock reading for our example. So I would have two seconds, negative four meters per second. And another point that I can analyze would be zero seconds, zero meters per second. If I do that, I end up with two seconds, minus zero seconds. And then on the top, I end up with negative four meters per second, minus zero seconds. So I find that the acceleration here is negative four meters per second divided by two. It's negative two meters per second every second, meaning that this object experiences a change in velocity by of negative two meters per second every second. And if I start out at zero meters per second and my acceleration is negative two, that means one second later my velocity is negative two, and two seconds later my velocity is negative four. So that makes sense. Okay, when I look at what's going on between the two and the four second clock readings, um, we can analyze it the same way, right? We can find the slope if we want to. But I'd like to take this opportunity to show you kind of a short trick here. Between two, three, and four seconds here, we have at clock reading two and clock reading three, we have these negative velocities, okay? And the slope here is positive, so we know that acceleration here is positive. If A is positive, but the V values are negative, this tells you that you have slowing down motion. Now what's interesting is that the object is slowing down between two seconds and three seconds. And between three seconds and four seconds, it slows down to the point where it gets to the zero meter per second velocity. What's happening right here at the four second clock reading is that the object is changing direction. Notice that you have a positive acceleration. The slope between the two second clock reading and the six second looks constant. But now you have positive velocity values. So if A is positive and V is positive, you'll now have speeding up motion. So from two to four is a slowing down from four to six. What did I just put? Speeding down? Uh, I think you mean speeding up. Okay. You're speeding up motion between four and six. Something else that is um, important, I think, to mention here is we know the direction of motion because it's a velocity versus time graph. So from zero to two seconds, not only do we know that the object is speeding up, but we also know that the object is moving in the negative direction. When it comes to two to four seconds, the object is still moving in the negative direction. Four to six seconds, the object is moving in the positive direction. Wait a minute. What happened at the four second clock reading then? At four seconds, the object turns around. Okay, six to eight seconds, slope of the line is zero. That means that the acceleration is zero. And that means that the velocity is constant. And if we take a look here, the velocity is four meters per second, four meters per second, four meters per second. So this object is moving, it's just moving at a constant velocity. So from six to eight seconds, I'm going to say it's moving in a positive direction at a constant velocity of four. So it does not speed up or slow down. It just moves at constant velocity of four meters per second. 
between 8 to 9 seconds, the object is moving in a positive direction, but slowing down. At the 9 second clock reading, the object turns around, starts moving in the negative direction, but is speeding up. So it first has a velocity of 0, and then it has a velocity of negative 2, and then quickly to negative 4. So we're moving in the negative direction and speeding up. OK, let's take a look at the next question. Here we're being asked to find the displacement of the object from 4 seconds to 8 seconds. Well, I know that for a velocity versus time graph, delta x is equal to the area under the v versus t graph. Sometimes this is referred to as the area under the curve. Let's look at exactly what's going on between 4, so right here, and 8 second clock reading. I notice that I end up with these two shapes. So here I have what looks like a rectangle, and over here I have a triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch each of these, and this is just a rough sketch in order to find the area of each of these and then in turn find the displacement. When I look at this triangle I have 4 second 5 6 so I know that the base is 2 seconds from 0 meters per second and this goes up to 4 meters per second. Now I'm going to set up the rectangle from 6 to 8 seconds this represents 3 seconds and 4 meters per second. Okay, let's find the area here. This shape here happens to be a triangle. I know for triangles that the area will be equal to one half the base times the height. So the area is equal to one half two seconds times four meters per second. I know here then that area is going to equal four meters. That means that the displacement is equal to 4 meters. Let's see what happens um, for the second set of clock readings here. The area of a rectangle is just base times height. So the displacement here will equal 3 seconds times 4 meters per second. And that will give you 12 meters. So this equals the displacement. So in total, the displacement is equal to 12 meters plus 4 meters, so the delta x is equal to 16 meters. I hope you found this video helpful as you begin to investigate velocity versus time graphs. As always, if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope you have a great day.